What's going on guys? Kevin from Epic Gardening here. We're doing an ebb and flow tutorial, a high level overview of this type of hydroponic system. Now let's get into it. First of all, every single type of hydroponic system has upsides and downsides and the type of system you choose will largely depend on what benefits you want and what downsides you're willing to put up with. Okay, now that we know that, let's get into the benefits of ebb and flow. First of all, it's easy to build. You can get one of these things done in an afternoon or so. It does not have a lot of moving parts, only a couple of electrical components. It's pretty good for beginners. All right, now it's easy to use. It's pretty much a plug and play slash set it and forget it system, provided you know how to mitigate some of the downsides of this type of hydroponic system, which we will get into. Finally, it is an efficient system. It does not use a lot of water or nutrients or uh, electricity, especially if you're going it outdoors and not indoors, which I would recommend. It can be very enjoyable to have an outdoor ebb and flow system because they also look pretty cool. Okay. Like many systems, it also has downsides. Let's get into those. First of all, it's high risk. There can be a lot of different things that can fail in the system, which can cause your plants to not get water or nutrients for too long, and then it will kill the entire crop. So you'll have no harvest pretty easy to to prevent that so don't get too scared but that is a risk of the system you can have toxic nutrient toxicity or deficiency effects due to the salt buildup that can happen just due to the way that the system works and this is sort of one that happens with many different systems but it can have an unstable ph and there's a couple ways to mitigate that as well all right let's get into what we will need to build this thing now I've put all the links to some of the more specific recommendations I have in the video description, but for now, let's go over the high level items we'll need. Of course, we'll need some growing media. I personally like to use grow stone to fill up the grow bed, and then I like to use something like a rapid rooter starter cube or rock wool to put my plants in. Of course, we'll need a growing reservoir or a nutrient reservoir. You can get those mostly from Home Depot. A lot of people like to use buckets or totes. I personally like to use the big totes. Electronics wise, we'll need a water pump and digital timer. Timer will control the water pump and the pump will pump up the water into the grow bed to feed our plants. We will need some sort of plastic tubing for the water pump to get the water up into the grow bed as well as for the water to come back down. I like to use PVC with some specialized PVC parts for that. And then of course we'll need a grow bed and nutrients. Now you can buy grow beds commercially, uh, but you can also build them out of almost anything. Um, you can be creative there and I'll, I'll provide some links in the video description to some cool designs as well. All right, let's go ahead and get into how to build this thing. So the first thing you're gonna need is your reservoir. Again, I've talked about it. It's just a simple tote, so we don't need to really cover too much there. Next, you have your pump, your tubing, and your timer. So your timer connects to your pump based on what you're growing, what cycle it is, or how far along it is in its growth cycle, and how much you're growing, that will determine the timing schedule. But for the most part, it's pretty simple to figure out. The water will pump up into the grow table, which is right here. Uh, you can buy these commercially, like I said. I personally do, because I like the design, and I like the, the pre-drilled elements that go with it. It just makes life a little bit easier. But if you're on a budget, or you don't want to spend the money, of course you can do a DIY. Uh, you'll have a drain tube here, which will basically just use gravity once the pump turns off to drain this thing out so it's not sitting up here the whole time. And then finally, you have your plants. Um, so again, let's talk about the nutrients and the growing media. So what I, what I like to do is where this water is, I will often have grow stones filling this entire table. So that's to provide some structure for the plants as well as some extra matter for the roots to adhere to. And then I will have either rock wool or these days I'm really just using rapid rooter starter cubes that I can get on Amazon and they're, I think they're a general hydroponics product to provide the initial structure where I'll, I'll plant uh, my seedlings in. So that's the basics of the system, guys. It's a very easy system to set up. Again, remember, if this pump dies, though, or if this timer dies, sorry, it will not control the pump. The pump will not pump water up. No water will drain out. You'll basically have dry, dying plants up here and all of the life-giving water and nutrition down here. So it's important to buy a high-quality timer and connect it in such a way that you know 
that there will not be a power outage or it, at the very least a power outage won't affect it. So this has been the ebb and flow tutorial. Again, it was high level. If you want to see some more in depth, exactly how to build something, definitely hit that like and subscribe button and let me know in the comments. Let me know what videos you want to see in the future. Any questions you have, I literally respond to every single comment. So definitely let me know again. Kevin from Epic Gardening, keep growing guys and happy harvesting.